The Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Corner, fueled by Donut Country and McDonald's Murfreesboro on FM 101.9 and AM 1450 Murfreesboro, FM 100.5 Smyrna, and streaming at WGNSSports.com. We're back on the Coaches Show, brought to you by Sir Pizza, whose three Murfreesboro locations offer a huge selection of mouth-watering pizzas, sandwiches, pastas, and wings. Order your favorites online at sirpizzatn.com. They've got a brand new app, too, and you can earn rewards points at Sir Pizza. Time to talk some Seagull football this morning. Adam Renshaw joins us here today to um, talk about uh, dipping the toe for the first time in the region waters, which is always uh, fun and exciting. Coach, um, last night, a uh, tough one on the road at Coffee. Yes, sir. Uh, very good, uh, very good Coffee County team. Uh, uh, really good up front defensively, and uh, we struggled offensively last night and uh, made some mistakes and uh, uh, come out on the wrong end of that. You know, um, Coffee is is an interesting team to to be in this region. Number one, they're uh, the, the the only one that ha- doesn't live in Murfreesboro. You know, and so and yeah. already a a tough region. They went through some coaching change last year, and they but they've they've really seemed to. Put together a pretty solid team. Oh yeah, they. Uh, I mean, they do a good job. I mean, their coaching staff is uh, really sharp, and uh, they got their kids in the right spot. You know, they don't have a lot of kids, but they got them in the right spots. And so, uh, yeah, they. Uh, I think they're doing a really good job down there. No, I mean, you can't sleep on anybody in this region, but um, you know, uh, going down there too, it kind of takes you back. It's it's really an old school feel. Oh yeah, no doubt. I. I, I I'm not sure how old the stadium is, but, you know, it's at their old high school. It's uh, off their uh, real high school campus. So, I mean, it, it you know, it has a uh, has a cool old-time high school feel to it. I uh, just wish we'd play better there. Yeah, um, and I haven't talked to you in a few weeks, but we have done your games, and it just seems like you have had injury after injury after injury, and we're talking about – key spots too in your lineup well yeah yeah we're uh, uh the running back position is, is where we're hurting right now we felt like going into the season running back was going to be a strength you know with Corey, jennifer and albia and some of the guys we had there and uh, those kids are hurt right now uh you know we moved a kid there last night kevin Inslee. he was injured so uh you know we uh uh, we're trying to pick it up, you know, trying to pick up our slack there and get caught up, but uh, definitely, definitely hurting at that one position. I mean, just offensively, when, but when you start losing players and you're filling holes, then there's also another hole that's left, <laughs> or somebody's playing, you know, offense and defense, playing all the time more than you'd really like. I mean, whenever you're filling a hole and you're filling it with someone else, then. Mm-hmm. Someone else has to step up. I mean, there's a lot of chess pieces to move. Oh yeah, and you know when you move uh, when 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 you move uh, one of your best receivers to a spot, well then you got to move a guy there, and so yeah. And uh, plus, I mean, the big deal is you lose all those practice reps, right? And, and so whenever a kid moves, you you lose a ton of practice reps, which they've been practicing on since you know in many cases since spring football. And uh, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps, and and all of a sudden you're starting over again trying to get it done in four four days you know exactly i don't know how how soon you you put kevin in that uh situation but he hasn't not that he's not capable but hasn't spent a lot of time in the backfield yeah and he's a great kid and i think he was looking forward to the challenge and and uh you know hopefully we get him back soon and he gets rolling i mean he's big to us on defense also he's a two-way starter he plays safety and so uh, hopefully we get him back soon get him going yeah and I guess going back to what I, my, the point I was trying to make, when when you do have people playing both on offense and defense, which is is pretty regular, but um, if you're counting on them defensively, but then you have to play them more on offense, then that leaves you dealing with the defensive side. <laughs> well, maybe you know. I mean, we we're still high school football. Well, sure, a lot of kids can still play both ways. You know, not. Uh, and I felt like our defense played great last night. We're playing great up front, you know. Uh, uh, you know, Jesse Beverly, Braden Graves, uh, JoJo Harris are three defensive linemen that play a lot up front. They played great. Uh, our linebacking core. We got a kid, uh, uh, Mason Grisham. His older brothers played for us the past three years, and uh, little brothers stepped right in there and played great up up to this point. 
uh, Kobe Ward, Bryson Green, who Bryson Green was ended up at running back last night playing a lot. And so uh, those kids played really well. We also moved Matthew Rice, our tight end. He was uh, he was a starting outside linebacker for us. And, you know, the, our, our dog outside linebacker position is, I guess, the other position that's kind of taken a beating for us this year. And so, uh, but those kids played great last night. And, uh, you know, in the secondary, uh, man, uh, Andrew Varner, uh, he he runs the alley and plays it. I mean, he he plays it like a high school football player should. Really good in the secondary, kind of our quarterback on defense. I feel, and our two quarterbacks played really well last night. Also, you, you mentioned Rice, and I mean, it, when you look at him, you say that's a football player. <laughs> you know, he's long. He takes up a lot of space, and uh, really, uh, you know, we realized last week uh, again that our outside linebacker position, we had to do something there, and. And Rice stepped into the role, and, and I thought played really well there, last, especially on one week of reps. Yeah, it, it's it's really cool to have um, kids who are willing to step in and willing to take the challenge. And it sounds like, you know, your team, your guys, they're not hanging their head and woe is me and, and you know, injuries and that kind of thing. They're using that as an opportunity to step into something they maybe a week ago weren't thinking they were going to do. Yeah, I, 100%. You know, our, uh, uh, you know, just thinking that's the corner position that we play on defense. I, you know, Delvion Ewing, William Santel, I, uh, you know, again, they challenged us on the edge with certain perimeter plays last night. And for the most part, those two kids were right there on the spot and played a great game, you know. And, and uh, so, I mean, you know, the the real thing is we just got to play better, you know, and, uh, um, you know, offensively, uh, so much is about uh, trying to get the engine going, you know, trying to get that thing tuned up and and not sputtering. And, and so we got to go back to practice and, uh, you know, clean up the run game, get physical. We got, we got plenty of adequate people to put in the spots and get going. We just got to get it going. Adam Renshaw is here with us this morning as we talk Seagull football here on the Prentice Alsop Heating and Air Coaches Corner. Um, you'll have to help me remember this, but uh, I think it was what fourteen nothing at halftime. So I mean, your yeah. your your defense held a a pretty good offensive um, team in Coffee County to just one score in the second half. Yeah, and uh, you know, in the first half, uh, you know, we one of those was a, a pick six. So, uh, and there was a short field on another one of those scores. So the defense played really well and. And our special teams are playing really well. We had one bad snap on a punt last night uh, that hurt us, but uh, man, our punter made a courageous play on that. Uh, uh, and, and generally, all year long, our special teams have played really well for us and been a bright spot. So, talk to me about how. Um, I mean, last night for most of the other teams in the region, I think you were the only one that played a region game this early. You're non-region next week when everybody else is. Is it just the draw? Is that how that happened with your yeah, schedule? You know, the state makes our schedules now with us being an odd number of teams in our uh, district. You know, it don't they don't match up right. perfectly. Uh, and, and so, yeah, uh, we'll, uh, and I, I assume it'll be the same way next schedule will go around. We're currently scheduling right now. And, and so, uh, but yeah, uh, it, you just got to look at the schedule. Every week, and say, "All right, there's there's the, there's the district game, and be aware of what's going on after the ball game." The next challenge that's ahead, the exactly. the next week, exactly. Um, I think they, what they started doing the scheduling of the region games last cycle, was that right? Yes, TWSWA yeah. picked it up, and I mean, uh, you know, there's issues with making sure we have enough officials uh, to play yeah. ball games, so that's why we play. Uh, we everybody has to play a Thursday night game. We play two. Um, and uh, you know, but I will say this: I, uh, you know, we've he we're hearing good things about the number of officials. Well, that's good. Uh, getting involved in the sport, of course, you know it. Uh, the thing about being a good high school football official is you just don't walk out there and do it. it. It takes some years to get experience. So more people are getting involved, but the experience of these crews, uh, they're having to work hard to get caught up right now. And and uh, honestly, this year, uh, our officiating crews, I think, have done a great job. Uh, you know. Uh, coaches are always going to have problems with with certain calls, and uh, but I think the officiating crews uh, are, are are. I mean, honestly, these are men giving it. They, they don't do it for the money. These are guys that are uh, trying to protect the sport and give kids uh, a venue uh, in which to get better at life. And and uh, like I said, we can't thank those guys enough. Well, a lot of them are 
former athletes uh, a, a way to give back to a sport that did so much for them as as kids and and things of that nature that's that's not to say that the uh, officiating situation is all perfectly fixed but it is nice to see that whatever the recruiting process that uh, has been going on is showing some fruits of that labor yeah well here, here's the thing i know about officials they may not be right but they're never wrong <laughs> <laughs> well you know yeah you should be a motivational speaker for officials, you know. I'd be uh, ex- excited to uh, to have you come out. I, a lot of people never like to be wrong. so <laughs> Exactly, yeah. I, I might need to be an official. <laughs> well, Coach, uh, you've got a chance to get back in front of the home crowd this next uh, Friday night. You have uh, a pretty good commando team coming in from Hendersonville. Yeah, 100%. You know, and it's homecoming week at Siegel High School and. Uh, you know, it's a big week to our student body, big week to our faculty. Uh, we do a great job of celebrating our students, celebrating our school. You know, the uh, the challenge will be for us this week, we got to get better offensively and uh, we, we got to get some work done. And so uh, remaining focused and getting ready to play this Andersonville squad, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a big deal. And, and I guess the big thing for you is more about Siegel than about Hendersonville, just getting reps in and getting people settled in uh, positions here. And, and, you know, the more snaps you can get under your belt, the better off you are. Oh, 100%. 100%. And, uh, you know, uh, we're playing a lot of kids in new positions, you know, and, and uh, uh, I don't mean to uh, use that as an excuse. We, sh- we, we, uh, uh, but we've just got to find our personality, uh, especially offensively. And uh, and get that right and uh, get the ball rolling. Sometimes homecoming week is um, maybe a coach's worst nightmare. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, you're 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 pretty calm and cool and all of that. I think and and your kids really know that you know that's that's for the school you know and and for the kids. But you know their focus has to be on football. Yeah, well, it's all around a game, a football game, right? right? And so. Uh, all the celebration and, and look, we want to be a part of a sport that is celebrated so much. That's part of the thing. It makes football so cool. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, the football players have to be about the football game. Coach, appreciate you spending some time with us this morning and uh, good luck against Hendersonville on Friday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Adam Renshaw joining us here on the Coach's Show brought to you by Craig's Tax Service, specializing in personal and business tax preparation, financials, and bookkeeping services. Find out more at craigstaxservice.com. Hello, this is Coy Young at Las Casas Feed Supply. We'd like to welcome you to our door. I'm Ian Young. 